Big Sean is a Detroit rapper that didn't come up through the Eminem cosign like Royce the 5 9 and D12, or the Jay Dilla umbrella like Slum Village and Elzai. Not only was Big Sean too young to be a member of these Michigan music movements, he was actually younger than many of his contemporaries of rap, like Kendrick Lamar, J. Cole, and Drake. It was actually another Midwest maven that swooped down and gave Sean the green light, Kanye West, who signed Sean to good music. But after three platinum albums, Finally Famous, Dark Sky Paradise, and I Decided, a gold project to boot with Hall of Fame, mixtapes, and a pair of collaborative albums, one with singer Janae Aiko, and other with producer Metro Boomin, why exactly is Big Sean looked at as merely one of the most non-essential essential rappers in the game? Before investigating the non-essential critique that has been a great cloud hovering above Big Sean, let's take a guided tour through the artistic accomplishments that keep him slotted into the essential department of rap. For one, Kanye West, who already had two platinum albums in the college dropout and late registration, ironically made Big Sean pick rap over college just as Ye once did, signing Sean in 2007. Sean was about to attend a big college, Michigan State, after graduating from high school with an exceptional 3.8 grade point average. Then suddenly, it was all a dream, much like Biggie once said. Sean heard from a friend that Kanye West was heading up to a local Detroit radio station, provoking the young rapper to seize his moment. He retold the tale to MTV, saying, Kanye West shook my hand and started walking away. Sean remembered. My friend was like, you gonna go for it? So I tapped him on the shoulder and was like, I'm an aspiring MC. I do this show every Friday. Can I rap for you? He was like, no, I gotta go. I'm like, man, please. You're my hero. Let me rap for you. Just let me spit for you. But their contractual agreement wasn't an immediate match. After getting back in contact with each other after a communication hiatus, Kanye invited Sean to roll out with him on the graduation album tour. It would be four years and several Kanye West albums later before Big Sean's debut album would ever even see the light of day, making its title finally famous, having even much more meaning. While speaking of Global Grind for an April 18, 2011 interview, his rookie year as far as studio albums go, Big Sean spoke about a rap style he had put out into the world around this time and how his influence was already seeping into the music industry. I made that super duper rhyme scheme. I made the one word rap rhyme scheme up. Drake made it more popular. You know, the one word metaphor describing some like used to the bottom scuba. I'm on the grind, skateboard to scooter. That rhyme scheme that rap has destroyed. So my favorite line probably was line after line after line after line after line, barcode. I felt like that was the best example of how to use that. Ironically, two years later, Big Sean ended up on a Drake song with two chains called All Me. In fact, Big Sean has had more opportunities to size up his lyrics against an impressive plethora of legends. He found himself within the signing company of both members of the throne, Jay-Z and Kanye West, on the Kanye West Presents Good Music, Cruel Summer compilation album, Track Click, in 2012. Two years earlier in 2010, Big Sean was featured on two other Kanye West posse cuts with heavyweight rhyme writers. Don't Look Down with Lupe Fiasco and Most Def, and Looking for Trouble featuring Pusha T, J. Cole, and Saha the Prince, both from the famed Good Music Fridays batch of weekly free songs from Kanye West's label. On Looking for Trouble, it was clear that Big Sean wanted his respect with lines like, Consider yourself lucky to see a legend before the prime, a killer before the crime, B.I.G. before the dine, greet me with a middle finger when you see me, it's cool cause I can't see your ass from this side of the TV. The acknowledgement from his peer and elders that Big Sean was on a mission to achieve greatness began to overflow with respected rappers putting in work with him. And the list is really long, including Common, Jay Electronica, Fabulous, Kendrick Lamar, Lil Wayne, Cameron, Busta Rhymes, Jadakiss, The Game, E-40, Meek Mill, Migos, Nipsey Hussle, Wale, Chance the Rapper, and Rick Ross, just to scratch the surface a little bit. Speaking of highly respected rappers, Big Sean has even gotten hometown love from two of the biggest hip-hop artists ever to come straight out of Detroit, Eminem and Royce the 5'9". On October 3rd, 2016, Royce the 5'9 hopped on Twitter and shouted out Sean by proclaiming, My little bro at Big Sean, too underrated. Shaking my head, it's pathetic. 
Speaking of Royce, he has shared the mic with Big Sean back in 2014 on a sturdy Eminem track, the aptly titled Detroit vs. Everybody, which also featured the ultra-charismatic Danny Brown, Motown's Lady of Rap, Dej Loaf, and Detroit's godfather Trick Trick. Proving he could hold his own with the greats, Big Sean spits, reminiscent on listening to 50 50 times a day, back when 10th grade was like 50 days away, trying to get paid 50 ways a day, used to put 50 on the layaway, now my closet 50 shades of grey. But with an overload of dollar signs, celebrity status, and an all-star team in the form of good music, Big Sean still doesn't find himself invited into the upperclassmen league of distinguished rappers that make history, that he seems to have no problem doing guest appearances with. Big Sean may have the commercial credibility, but his name seems to evaporate when the ranking of royal rappers goes down in public rap conversations. It seems as if Big Sean fans get silenced when they rep his name among the likes of J. Cole, Drake, and Kendrick Lamar. Many rappers have made entire careers out of the thrill of the superficial trappings of money and sex. But why when Big Sean jogs through his same hiking trail, much more is expected out of his journey, with much of Big Sean's personal life not extending beyond his spinning sprees and revolving door of X-rated scenery in his music. His overall lack of substance seems to work against him more than others. Who is Big Sean? Is he an invisible mannequin wearing the life of luxury as a uniform for our contemporary entertainment? It takes internal reflection, and more than just bars to connect with listeners on an emotional level. Tupac, the notorious B.I.G., Nas, Common, we connect to them because we understand their stories, know where they come from, relate to the obstacles that they overcome, having clarity on what their belief systems consist of, and are aware of things that concern them about the world that they occupy. Boasting to be the most handsome, the best dressed, and the ultimate author of the biggest groupie diary doesn't welcome an audience into your shoes, especially if 99% of your fans probably make 99% less money than you do. Big Sean has become a rapper that is fun to listen to, but doesn't have enough room in your appetite to keep consuming, like giving your kids cake for dinner and wondering why they don't want vegetables for dessert. Never mind the first few Big Sean albums if you're looking for deep reflections on life. In all fairness, he was just getting started as not only an artist, but as a man. But by the time we get to the two albums Big Sean put out in 2017, I decided in Double or Nothing, when he hit the last year of his roaring 20s, Sean's attempts towards maturity was definitely acknowledged, but not embraced by his critics. First off with I Decided, the popular Dead and Hip Hop podcast offered up their album review, and at the height of their critique, it was co-host Mike C. Town who summed it all by saying, Big Sean is trying to be a deep and a more mature artist. The problem is, he's not that deep. So before, he had these corny, goofy lines that you would just be like, come on man, that's stupid. But now, he is trying to be more serious. But he's not a good enough lyricist to make us connect. Like, there's not enough depth there as a lyricist to make us appreciate the depth of his life. The intellectual and emotional dissatisfaction continued further with Anthony Fantano of The Needle Drop who prefaced his review with an overall opinion of Big Sean's musical impact, or lack thereof, by stating, Not a single hit that we're going to remember 10 years from now, except maybe to recall some of the low points of hip-hop in this decade. At this point in the review video, the cover art for Big Sean's single dance featuring Nicki Minaj pops up as a reference, to the point that Anthony Fantano is trying to make. Then his 6 out of 10 review rolls out, assessing Sean's work as having too much uninspired expression involved in his creation. He seems admirably humble at times on his project, though, I mean, I would too if I somehow had made a career out of being behind the curve. I think I agree with what a lot of people are saying about this record, that this is Big Sean's best album so far, but Big Sean's best album is a decent Drake album. Anthony Fantano comes to the conclusion that Big Sean has his moments, but doesn't come across as essential listening. While I did enjoy a lot of this record, there's only so much I can praise it, because yet again, Big Sean continues to be the most non-essential artist in hip-hop today, because he doesn't really bring anything to the table that his contemporaries aren't already. With every project he puts out, it's just like he's bringing seconds for people who haven't had quite enough of what's already out there. Moving on down to Double or Nothing, the Big Sean and Metro Boomin project received a middle-of-the-road 5.4 out of 10 review by Pitchfork, who said, Though fun and at times politically salient, even Metro Boomin cannot rescue Big Sean from his habit of writing the absolute corniest lyrics imaginable. Big Sean is the nickelback of rap. His music is earnest but predictable. He is critically reviled but puts up number one albums. 
there are as many people who hail his appearance on Jimmy Kimmel's mean tweet sketch as there are who think he's got real bars. The double or nothing lyrics that seem to have caused the biggest pause, initiating an exhaustive explosion of Twitter backlash, were the words from Who's Stopping Me when Big Sean spits, I had a dream I rode with Rosa Parks in the back of the box, and we was blowing a blunt and she was packing a strap. Like, damn, it do feel good to be black in the back. Reducing the civil rights icon Rosa Parks to a weed-breathing, gun-toting stereotype that has downgraded the humanity of hip-hop artists for decades is not woke, and it's not a joke. No matter which one of the attempts was being made, they came off too cringy to be considered clever. With so many important topics directly affecting Big Sean's home state of Michigan, from the economical destruction and rebuilding of Detroit to the horrifying water crisis in Flint, there are too many opportunities for Big Sean to use his undeniable talent to introduce us to his heart and give us all the reason to care. This has been a Hip Hop Madness original. Make sure to stay tuned and stay up to date on everything we got going on by hitting that subscribe button and notification bell. Oh, and don't forget to follow us on Instagram at Hip Hop Madness and join the movement.